1976, I was about seven and a half years old, and at that time they, they were having the Summer Olympics in um, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and in that particular event there was a, uh, there was a event called the decathlon that measures pretty much the best fitness level of, of any athlete. This, this man by the name of Bruce Jenner was a gold medalist. And he, um, he, you know, was the best at the time. And that's what he looked like at that time. You can see a pretty good specimen of a male human being. Um, this is what he looks like today. And we can see he looks much different. And he was once hailed to be the... Uh, Greatest at one of the greatest athletes in the world, and this news piece dated uh, April 28, 2015. He says, uh, this former Olympian is revealing a secret that has caused him turmoil for decades. People look at me differently, he says. They see me as a macho male, but my heart and my soul and everything I do in life, it is part of me. The female side of me is part of me. That's who I am. My brain is much more female than it is male. It's hard to understand, but that's what my soul is. Let's see, this is a, another picture of him here, of what he looks like now. And this is an extreme example of what we might call a gender blurring in our society today. And we've talked in here a lot about the homosexual agenda and homosexual acts and how we have this this blurring between the male and the female and wanting males to stop being so male and females to be more male and you know moving some males over to the feminine and you know it's damaging to people and it's not obviously not what God intended on that note of, of moving the males closer to being, ma uh, females more closer to being masculine, there was an article written recently by uh, Marion T. Horvat, a PhD. She's a, a Catholic lady that does some pretty good work. And she talked about uh, women in sports. She calls it natural and unnatural challenges to purity. And she mentions about how in sports, you have to dress a certain way and girls are in, in, you know, these ladies are in certain positions that are really immodest. And um, Pius XI and Pius XII talked openly about this. Uh, Pius XI had said that um, he was concerned about the, whenever they started having a gymnastics competition in the Olympics. And Pius XII, in the, this was in the, um, in the 40s, he says, many women have forgotten Christian modesty because of vanity and ambition. They rush wretchedly into dangers that can spell death to their purity. They give in to the tyranny of fashion, be it even immodest in such a way as to appear, not even to suspect that it is unbecoming. They have lost the very concept of danger. They have lost the instinct of modesty. She points out, on the one hand, that, you know, that's pretty bad. But um, at least they would remain feminine at that time. And their central, censurable position was still a, is still a natural one. But today, there's a new long step being taken down the stairs of decadence, the emergence of... The masculine girl. Sometimes you hear it referred to as a, a, an androgynous figure on a girl. It doesn't look female at all. They are rough, sassy girls with the muscles of men good enough to play against the guys, girls who have traded in their femininity 
in their mania for sports. This I want to take as kind of the setup of this, this merging or this, this blurring of genders of these two forces, you know, going against each other to try to uh, make people into some kind of freak of a being that God never intended. 